Promotional vinyl records. What are they? Are they more rare? Are they more unique? And how do you even identify them? We will discuss on this episode of Talking About Records. My name is G.I. Sanders from NTX Vinyl, small chain of independent shops in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. If you're not local but you're in the U.S., you can shop online at ntxvinyl.com. Give us a subscribe here on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Really appreciate that. Let's talk about promos. Um, there's a lot to unpack here in regards to um, you know how to identify if you have a promotional record, um, you know, and are they more rare? Are they more unique? But first and foremost, why do they even exist? Well, if you go back in time, pre-internet, um, and you're a record label, you want to get your album, your artist's album, out to the radio stations as soon as possible to get the DJs engage with that music, right? And so before the album actually comes out in the stores, you want to get them to the DJs. Well, these days that's all done obviously just via digital file transfer and it can all be tracked and watermarked to make sure that no one spreads that music around early, right? Back in the day when radio stations are actually spinning vinyl records on the air, you know, you had to find a way to get that physical product to that DJ so he could experience it early and get excited about it so that when it did come out, he would, uh, you know, promote the album, obviously, or even spend the album on the air before it came out, right? But, you know, you ha- I have to understand there's a danger there because if he's just got a normal copy of the album and he's got it before anyone else, well, that's pretty unique and he could walk down to his local record store and probably sell that, uh, sell that record, right? So if, if you're a record label and you were pressing, you know, 10,000 copies of a Jimi Hendrix LP or something um, and you knew that, you know, the first 100 of those uh, we're going to go to DJs, you had to have a way to track those, right? Because you didn't want that DJ to just walk down to the store and sell it. Um, so that's where the idea of the promotional copy came in and making it a little different, right? So that's really why the promos, regardless of what form they take, and we'll look at the different ways that they are identified, that's why they are a little more sought after. Because in that scenario I mentioned, obviously, maybe there's a run of 10,000 albums. But the first 100 usually that come off the pressing plant because those are the first the first ones that exist those were given the designation of promo copies because literally people at the labels took them and ran them to the radio station so that the DJs got the first listen they would put it on the air to start pre-promoting that record that way not, may not come out for weeks or months right Um, And so again, having that trackability was really important, but that creates that scarcity and that rarity because, you know, there's only 100. And if you know anything about pressing records or you've heard about pressing records, the earlier it's pressed, the better it can typically sound because it is a physical thing and the stampers that actually stamp the vinyl, they do wear out over time and they only use them for a certain amount of time and then those will be cycled out and they will create new stampers right and so if you're getting one of the first or let's say the first couple hundred even or whatever records that are made on those stampers it's a real thing that the clarity in that album and the precision and how it is pressed is going to be a little better quality than than let's say the 10,000th copy that came off that press from that particular stamper right so it's not only a visual thing in regards to what the record looks like it's not only a uh, scarcity thing in regards to how many were pressed it's also a quality thing in some circumstance now everyone's ears are different i say this a lot when i talk about sound quality um, i do have a, a wide variety of promotional records and some of them do you know sound a little better if i a b them and right i don't think there's a drastic sound difference that can be said for any pressing from the first one that comes off from the hundredth to the five thousandth but there, there certainly can be because every record's different every record is pressed in different amounts and different quantities and is quality control different but there is definitely a collector's mindset that the promotional ones are the first ones that exist and just like anything the early ones the first ones those are always going to be a little more sought after even if it's just a number written on the jacket you know a hand numbered or a machine number doesn't even align necessarily with whether or not that record came off the press first but collectors still like those lower early numbers right and so that plays into the idea of the promotional copy as well so let's start looking at some records though i've got uh, like i said a sampling of promotional Let's talk about the white label promo. This is probably the most sought after uh, of the uh, the style of promotional copies, if you will. And that is because it is uh, the actual disc, the label on the disc, 
is actually completely different. So here's an example of the Clash's debut LP, a white label promo. The, uh, the actual version is not white. It's got a normal uh, colored label from Epic. But in the white label promo, you can see, and I'll hold it up here again a little closer, it's actually got demonstration, not for sale right there. And that's a pretty... Um, a pretty common identifier there is to see an additional stamp on top of the white label promo um, that tells that radio DJ and anyone who else and anyone else who might get that record that it was for pr promotional purposes and it should not be sold. And then that tells everyone that hey, it came off the pressing plants first, and these are one of uh, you know a fewer in existence, right? So. By doing that, by creating that unique white label, obviously it accomplished a lot of things for the uh, for the record label for the artist because it distinguished it. Here's another one from uh, uh, from Queen's Hot Space featuring Under Pressure. There's another white label promo. This one doesn't doesn't uh, does not designate you know not for sale. It just says for promotion use only. But what I was getting at is. Uh, you know, by, by differentiating these, they obviously served a purpose, um, but they also, what they did is they created a really unique collector's item, right? And, and there usually are not numbers. In fact, I've, I've rarely seen a situation where anyone knows how many of a certain promotional copy are made. No one knows if it's 10 or 500 for that matter. And I'm sure that varied based on the artist. Um, here's Ride the Lightning by Metallica, a pretty cool white label promo I have. Uh, pretty sought after album, as you would imagine. Um, and so for collectors, again, getting that promotional version um, has to do with a couple things. There's the uh, for promotion use only on the white label of Ride the Lightning. Not only do you hope to get a little better sound quality because it's an, uh, one of the first ones coming out the press, you obviously um, love it because it looks different because that makes it more unique. Um, and then, you know, most importantly, you've got uh, it comes down to scarcity, like I mentioned. Maybe there's only 100 printed. Maybe there's only 500 printed. Again, no one really knows that answer on most in most scenarios. Um, sometimes these days they'll even you know um, you know number their promotional copies, which is a, a another tactic to get uh, to create FOMO and create uh, get get people involved, whether it's a test pressing or a promo pressing. But um, the fact remains that all of those add up to collectability and collectability in most cases equals value. And so not always are white label promos or any of the other promos I'm gonna show you more valuable um, inherently, but they have over time started to gain more value again, just because every, the people who know about these know there are just less of them, less of them out there. And that's really what it has to do with, right? It just comes down to numbers. There may be tens of thousands of, you know, this Sam Cooke album, Pressed, but how many of them are on the white label that say not for sale, right? And so if you're a collector, you and, and you're a completist, and you're looking for, you know, unique, rare, kind of uh, individualized items, the, uh, the promo copies can be very sought after and have gone up in value a lot over the years because collectors know these, uh, you know, the reasoning behind them, right? Here is a really cool one. Uh, this is Marvin Gaye's What's Going On, and I like this one because you can actually see, I'm looking for the side it's on, it actually says DJ copy, not for sale. So that's really cool and tells you exactly what it was for, right? And so again, you know, I think it comes down to those three things. It's like, uh, a little bit better sound quality in some circumstance, certainly lower numbers of them made. And then last but not least is the, you know, the differentiation in the look. There's a, this is U2's uh, Desire single, promotional copy, not for sale. Uh, Larry Mullen on the front there. So the white label promo is certainly um, the most sought after because I think it has the most differentiating features. This is a cool album by uh, The Meters. Um, but there are other types of white label promos as well, right? I've got a couple more. I'm sorry. There are other types of promos in addition to the white label promo. Here's one that actually has promotional copy, not for sale, a sticker on the jacket. You don't always see that, um, but sometimes they'll go the extra mile again. They were, back in the day, they were just trying to, again, differentiate these and keep them out of record stores. So white label promos. Um, are probably the most sought after, like I mentioned. I've got one more to show you, and then I'll get on to some other cover. This is a really cool white label promo from uh, Willie and the Poor Boys from Credence. 
here is uh, I like the fantasy label, and it's just got promotional copy written on that one. So I've got a good variety of the white label promos. Um, they are fun to find. Sometimes you'll find one, and um, you know you get really excited, and you think, oh, this was, must be really valuable, really rare. And sometimes it just doesn't pan out. It's just kind of a normal copy along with the the stock copy. Um, but it but it does vary depending on the artist. I would say most of the times the uh, the top tier artists or albums, the promo versions are, are significantly more value. But some of the more common albums, um, if you find a promo, may, you know maybe might not make that much of a difference. All right, so let's talk about other ways that promos are designated. You have got. Let's see. This is what's known. I, I just call it kind of the track sticker. I'm not sure if that's the official name. These are really cool. Uh, unfortunately, it kind of damages the cover because you got this big sticker on here. But again, does it? Because now it's more unique, right? So if you've got a normal copy of this, you may want to keep this one because it's got the track sticker on it. And it's actually got kind of check boxes on here for uh, someone at the record label to actually check off which songs uh, are the key tracks for the DJs, right? Or the DJs could do it themselves because if you've got a whole stack of records coming in from a record label and you've never heard of any of these bands, you need to know which song is the single. This is the one I need to play on the air, right? Or at least need to take a listen to, see if I like it and play it on the air. So the track list sticker is really cool. I've got a few examples of those. Um, here's another Dr. Feel Good. And then I've got a, uh, a Petty Dan the Torpedoes as well. So not only does this have the track sticker again with the... Uh, with the check boxes demonstration not for sale then you also have another identifier the gold stamp promo so moving forward past the white label promo which i think existed through uh, the late 70s or early 80s if uh, if i'm correct i'm guessing a little bit on that but uh labels went to the stamping of albums as opposed to actually producing different types of labels on the disc so the gold stamp promo um, is pretty common throughout the 80s and even the 90s. I think I've got another, uh, another, another one of these I think has the gold stamp. I think it was this Clash, yeah. So you can check out the gold stamp and you see how similar it is, right? It's very similar if you hold up um, the Petty and this Clash, you can see it's a pretty similar. And that was literally a machine stamping process. So at the end of the pressing, uh, you know, at the end of the creation of the jackets before the albums are put in, they probably went through an additional step where they uh, stamped that gold stamp promo in there. Um, so again, just another identifier in another way. So not only the white label promo, but now you have the kind of the track listing and then you also have the gold stamp promo. So a couple different ways. And a lot of it was just, um, you know, experimentation from the labels. They were trying to figure out what worked, what was easiest, um, you know, what, uh, you know, probably what was least expensive, honestly, to do. Because again, if you're pressing a whole bunch of one album and you just got this small segment over here, we need to do something a little different on it. That creates, you know, a different manufacturing process and process. So they're probably experimenting. I think printing the different labels on the album was probably a little more cumbersome to where then when you go just to the jacket and you keep the album itself the same, um, you know, there's less, uh, less legwork there. Now, you know, the one thing to keep in mind is on a gold stamp promo or trackless promo, most of the time, it's just a normal label. There's no, there's no white label there. Um, so is this worth a lot more, this version of Dan the Torpedoes versus a normal copy? Sometimes, you know, some again, some collectors really like to collect just promos. So to to that person, yeah, it could be worth more. But it's more or less the exact same album. You don't know if this exact copy of Dan the Torpedoes came off the press as number one or number one hundred thousand, right? So there's no uh, there's no way to even guess at that, regardless of how many were pressed, because this is just a differentiation for the, on the jacket itself. So the album, the disc is is pretty much identical. The other way that um, labels have designated promos over the years is by simply damaging the album, more or less. So here is an example of a corner cut. There's a couple different ways you can cut an album. This is the corner cut. There's also what's called a notch, where they'll actually take a, uh, a device and it punches out a little segment of the album. Those can be designated not only as promos, but also as discount copies. And it depends on the label, it depends on the record store, depends on how the albums were treated and when they came out. But typically when you see an album that has a very clean corner cut, or very uh, a very uh, you know about a quarter inch to a half inch notch through it. That can be a signifier of a promo as well. Not always because, like I mentioned, it can also be an identifier of a discount copy. And what I mean by that is, um, records would go out to record stores 
um, the record didn't sell as well as they'd hope, and you'd have all these extra copies sitting at the record store. So the way that they would discount them is they would notch them out, which would designate them to a different bin with a lower price, and essentially, you know, again, damaging the album. So do those become more collectible? Not in most cases, but again, they are different. They are more unique. To me, I don't really love the corner cuts and the discount cuts. Like it just kind of ruins the artwork a little bit. It depends on uh, it depends on kind of how well it's done. Again, if I look at this this copy of The Dead, Steal Your Face, like that's not too bad. It's a little a little more than I would like, but at least it's clean and it's not all frayed. You can tell it's done by a uh, by a device versus just a person you know sawing it off or whatever. And that's how you can really tell if it's an actual promo or a discount copy versus uh, you know just damage to the album, right? So. Promo copies are fun. I think for me, the biggest thing is more about the uh, the context of it because if I'm thinking back to you know early '70s and I you know a DJ copy is really cool because they're the first ones to hear it. Like those are one of the first copies that the needle got dropped on. The first ones that potentially were played on the air. So for me, it's less about like you know how rare it is or how many that are made or those types of things. It's just kind of the story behind it because uh, you know that type of thing doesn't exist these days. It's all digital. You know, radio is uh, you know barely barely still surviving as is in a, in a terrestrial format. Um, you know, everything's streaming and everything's on demand. And so um, for me, I think it's more about the nostalgia of just thinking back to, um, you know, that radio DJ getting that copy from a label in advance. He's never heard it before. His audience has never heard it before. And he's actually exposing that music to people over the air for the first time, which is obviously the way new music um, was uh, was consumed by people back in the day over the radio. Um, so that that's really what it comes down to for me in regards to promo copies. I'll take some photos of these so you can kind of see the labels close up, especially on the white labels and some of the gold stamps so you can see. But search through your, search through your collection, see if you can find any. Sometimes you don't even notice. I've had ones in my collection um, for a while and I didn't even realize just because I kind of um, you know, shelve the album before I even got to playing it and whatever and pulled it out and realized it's a promo after the fact or realized there was a gold stamp on the back of the cover. Sometimes you don't even really realize those things. So now that you kind of know what to look for, hopefully that helps a little bit, especially not only your own collection, but when you're out digging, you're out at a record store, now you kind of know what to look for, at least when you do see something like a differentiating logo or a stamp or a corner cut, now you have a little bit of context to know what that is. And, and if you use something like Discogs, usually the uh, promotional copies are differentiated as a different pressing or a different item. So you'll see the white label promo, um, you know, separate from the regular pressings. Uh, the gold stamps and the track list stickers usually are not differentiated. Sometimes they are, it just kind of depends how particular people want to get. But again, those, uh, those aren't necessarily a different pressing of the album. It's just a, a way that they treated the jacket as opposed to the white label as an actual, uh, you know, different process where they stuck a completely different sticker on the album. So I love promos. They're fun to collect. They're absolutely fun to find in the wild, uh, regardless if there, there's extra value or rarity there. I just think they're, again, they're a different item. And if you're a collector and you, uh, you're going through certain artists, and you like different versions of their album, it's definitely something to keep an eye out for. So hopefully that was helpful. If you got some cool uh, promos in your collection, I'd love to hear and see them. So let us know um, and really appreciate you tuning in again. I'll pop up some other videos here on the channel. Thank you as always for watching and we will see you again next time on Talking About Records.